And good afternoon again. And um, this is uh, the, is a topic which is, oh yeah, this presentation was finished something like a half an hour ago. So, and uh, be because the, the topic is really recent. Um, uh, so, BPF is everywhere. It's, it's, it's getting more and more, I mean, like in security. And uh, I, I saw today a Twitter post that uh, Dave Miller uh, had retweeted where people are wanting to have BPF for other operating systems so, so that it, it doesn't become something that uh, ties you to Linux. So, you, you want to have the same thing on the other side, you want to have the same bytecode running there, and, and that's something that's possible. Uh, you, you can have this thing running on smart NICs. So, I mean, it, 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 it workflowed it the right way, let's say, after all the, those years. So, it's flexible, it has a, it improves performance, so lots of innovation, but then we have a problem as a support organization. Uh, how are we going to support this thing? There are lots of, it, it's popping out everywhere, and uh, up to some two weeks ago, one week ago, it was just like a, a, a out of the radar. Uh, you, you would not see this easily on a profiler. You would not map it back to, I mean, there, there are all sorts of things that uh, are covered in this presentation that tries to solve this problem, tries to, to get the BPF uh, to be observable, to be auditable, uh, uh, so that you can uh, use it uh, and support it. So, B, B, BTF, BTF type format. It started as a type format. Now it's, it has more than that. It, it, it has an extension, a, a second ELS section that has line number information and that has that you can use to, to ask for uh, the JITED binary and the original uh, bytecode so that you can insert this into a profiling session, a tracing session. And, and later on, do post-processing analysis uh, using this information that the kernel will provide to you. It has its origin on the equivalent uh, compact C type information that came with Sandy Trace. And, and, and the story for Sandy Trace is interesting because you, you don't have the header files. So you had to have the definitions for the uh, structures in some other place. So this other place was the compact C type information. Uh, it's a subset of Dwarf. You, you cannot do with it uh, everything you can do with Dwarf. But it's always available. Uh, you, all your programs have this as a section. It's kind of like the CFR, the, the call from information that came from the debugging information area to be uh, always available so that you could use this kind of thing with uh, exception handling C++. So it starts as a debugging information, but it can be used for other things. Uh, you have a new, uh, you have sysbpf, which uh, predates BTF, of course, and um, and you have in the kernel source you have a, a library libbpf uh, tools libbpf, and now it, it 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 has code to notice when a BPF program that you that one of the steps up from BPF trace all the way to this thing running, it will build the object file, and then Clang will uh, generate BTF information. Or, as I'm going to show you, there are other ways for you to generate this BTF information, which was the first, the first uh, method for uh, getting existing debug information and generating uh, BTF. There is this BPF BTF load. That, so, you, 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 you first you load the BPF, uh, and then afterwards you have to associate with it the information that you find uh, on the object file for the BPF program. The kernel, as it does with BPF, it validates this thing. It validates the, the, uh, the, uh, this information to, 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 to check that there are several checks that we're going to see. And tools can use this BPF object get info by FD to get the information and then use it in any way they like. Uh, the one of the first things you may think about using it is for pretty printing BPF maps. BPF ma a BPF map is an, a structure that you use to communicate from the user space tooling side to the kernel BPF programs. You, you can have a map that is accessed by multiple uh, BPF programs inside the kernel 
and the user space, the coordinate using these things. There are all sorts of, all kinds of maps. There are hash tables, there are maps of maps, there are arrays, there are all sorts of things. You get kernel data structures for, uh, uh, for bookettization and, uh, and transform them, uh, make them accessible to BPF programs as a BPF map. Uh, and then you have this uh, BPF tool, which uh, you use to um, query the kernel about what are the programs that are loaded, um, what's the size of these programs, uh, ask for the JIT uh, code, and etc. And so you can ask for, to enumerate, and we're going to see uh, what are the, the maps that are in place, and uh, you can then ask for the value for the first one or for a specific uh, entry. And then you can pretty print these elements uh, using the BTF information. So BPF maps. This is an example of a map in the path trace uh, BPF side that I'm uh, working on to collect pointer contents and to do uh, filtering uh, using BPF. So it's on the, it starts. So the first uh, you have this struct syscall, which is in the BPF program. And the only information that has as of now is if this is enabled or not. So when you do perftrace-e open and read, it will get this table that has, that has 512 entries and will uh, put enabled for the open or if, and for the ones that you selected. And this BPF map, uh, it's, uh, it's a construct that is in the perf um, sources that can be used in, in BPF programs when you use it, it with uh, perf trace. Uh, I did it this way because uh, for you to associate uh, the, the type as of, of a value and of, a, uh, of the key, you have to, you, you get here, the, the, the int is the key and struct syscall is a value. So if you expand this, you're going to see that uh, struct syscall, BPF map uh, syscalls and then the type key size, value size, and the number of entries. That's the way you, you create a, a BPF map, be it in BPF trace, not BPF trace, in BCC or in, uh, in uh, perf trace. So BPF tools will query the kernel about BPF, about programs, about maps, about map contents, and you can do lookup for, for values, and you can even add things to the, to the, to, to the map, and etc. So perftrace uses BPF to collect syscall pointer payloads. Uh, as I said before, uh, the trace point only has six integer arguments. And uh, I, it's no use for me. I mean, most of the time you want to see what's the name of the file, not the pointer to where it is. Uh, and it uses BPF maps for filtering as well, uh, for, for telling, oh, don't trace the tracer to avoid the feedback loop, for instance. or if you ask it to do a system-wide tracing and uh, you notice that uh, something is generate lots of these calls and you are not interested in that, you can ask for filtering that specific PID. So you create a hash table and, and, and put on this hash table the, the PIDs that you don't want to be traced. Um, and for telling what to collect. So you, you, you have on, on that struct uh, syscall, now you have just the, the if it's enabled or not. But later on, you will be telling uh, that the first argument uh, needs to be copied and it is a, a string. And uh, if you're going to tell, for instance, to emulate S trace, write, or read when you want to take a snapshot, the, the start of the buffer, and then print it. So you're going to say how many bytes you want to copy when you get to, to that specific syscall. And for syscalls where they are struct, BTF will provide a way to know how many bytes to copy and later on how to uh, print it. And even for filtering as well, you, you can get the offsets and stuff and then create the, the, pro the BPF program. So putting a BPF program plus maps in place. If I do perftrace dash A, uh, which is for the whole system, all CPUs, and dash E, nano slip, and do slip 100 hours just to be sitting there and looking only at uh, the nano slip system call. It will, because it's configured to do so, it will 
Besides the, uh, uh, looking for the nanoslip uh, syscall, it will add an event, which is the BPF program that will collect the things. So with that running, you do BPF2, PROG, TU6. I, I did TU6 because the, the two, the two uh, BPF programs that are running as it started by PerfTrace. There are more, there are more before. Uh, that are used by other components of the system, but I'm interested only on those two. So uh, this has some information that's interesting. Uh, uh, the jitted size of the C center at this stage in the PerfTrace development, it's only 381 bytes. Uh, uh, and then uh, 496 bytes, it's uh, uh, using of memory, and it's using, uh, the, the C center is using three maps. The, the, there is a map for the syscalls, there is a map for filtering stuff, and uh, the number of maps may, may grow. And at C's exit, you are using just, just two maps. I wish two were shared with uh, the, the enter. Let's say if you are filtering open, you want to discard the enter for open and the exit for open. So you have to look at, at the same map. And if you call BPF2 map to look at those three maps that are being used by the, the two BPF programs. You're going to see the name, uh, uh, augmented syscall, that's a perf event array type of map, which is the way that the, the, the BPF can insert things into the perf ring buffer to be processed by perf trace, by, by, by the, the tooling user space. You have the array, which is for the syscalls to, to tell which syscalls are enabled and which ones are not, and in the future to uh, tell what to collect and how many bytes to collect for each of the arguments. And you, you have one extra map, which is a hash for the PIDs that I'm filtering. I'm not interested in, the, in, in, in if I do a lookup on this and it's there. No, uh, it, it's not so. Uh, to dump the contents of a map, uh, I, at first I'm looking at what is the number for nanoslip. That's the, the, the one that I enabled. Uh, so for, for x86, and this is a file that's generated as part of building the, the PerfTrace tool, uh, it generates a syscall table, and the syscall table for x86 says that nanoslip is the syscall number 35. So if you dump the contents of that map 362, which is the, the syscalls, I, I put an excerpt where in the middle it's 23, which is X for 35. So you see that this is not beautified. This is just the, the size of the key for an array, for some reason, is hard-coded to be 32 bits. I mean, in the kernel, if you ask for an uh, a array map, with a key size of one byte, that's what I was wanting, it fails. To, to, to discover this was quite a, I was not, not, not imagining why it was that, I had to read the code to, to see. So it, it's enabled. With BTF, this thing will be uh, show just as, in, as in an integer and uh, the other side as a Boolean. And you can do map lookup to, 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 to close the, the gap. Uh, if you look at uh, BPF2, do a map lookup on the map with ID 362 with the key 35, it's, it shows in X, 23, and the value 1. So it would again show it uh, beautified. So generating BTF info, how, how do you do that? Uh, a long time ago, uh, I had this tool called PA Hole, which is used to dump data structures using the dwarf information so that you can see where the, the cache lines are placed, if there are holes that you can use to reorganize, and people have been using this for, for a long time when they are doing KBI comparisons and things like that, or, or how, when they are trying to find a space to insert a new field without changing the offsets, making the data structure more packet. He saw that because he works with the Spark uh, port of Linux, and uh, he wanted to know about the details of uh, Solaris and, and, and the details of Solaris were available via CTF, the, the C compact type information, all the data structure for the kernel that were possible to use in a D-trace script were there. So he, he wrote a, a set of headers and a, a simple data dumper and, and sent to me, and then I 
uh, made the PA hole code base to uh, be uh, debugging format agnostic so that it could work with uh, uh, Dwarf or with CTF. And I wrote as well a CTF encoder so that I could from Dwarf generate CTF and then from CTF Freddy printed the, 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 the structure, do the same with Dwarf, check if the, the two match it, and then everything was working. Uh, no, nowadays, uh, LLVM 8, I think from 8, the version 8 onwards, uh, it generates it directly. Right? It gener when, you, when you ask for debugging information, it will generate Dwarf and, BT and BTF. Um, I don't know if in all of the, I don't think that's in all of the targets. It's when you ask for the target architecture to be BPF, uh, say, uh, generate debugging information and build this thing for the BPF machine, <coughs> a BTF section will be there. So, and we have the encoder in, 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 in PA hole, which was the first thing, the, the first uh, way for you to generate a BTF section, to, to encode BTF, to create a BTF section, was using this thing. Uh, reusing the CTF loader from, from Pahol, Pahol uh, to make it um, uh, generate BTF. They, they took the, the CTF definitions and then and from there, they said, oh, this is not so good, I need this and that, and then they came up with BTF. Uh, so but basically it, gener it gets dwarf, puts into an internal representation, generates CTF, and, and, and encodes it in a new ELF, ELF section. So that's an example. You have test.c, the, the structure, and then uh, uh, if you do gcc-g for debugging, and the generated file will be uh, a file for x86-64, I didn't specify the, the target, and with debug info. If I then uh, look at what were the uh, dwarf information ELF sections, you have all of these uh, with the size and etc. So if you, if you just use PA hole with this uh, dwarf information, you're going to see an output like this. Uh, or for the kernel, we're going to see uh, task structure or whatever, any, any other data structure. It will say where there are alignment holes and etc. If you use PA hole to, to encode BTF, uh, and you, uh, it's uh, dash capital J, and if you use <coughs> capital V for verbose, then you see uh, how it encoded it. It's everything based in a bit, in offsets of bits and not offsets of bytes, uh, so that you could encode bit fields uh, in the same way that you encode uh, normal types. So you don't, uh, because dwarf has, uh, when you have a bit field, you have to have the byte offset and the bit offset. And so that's one of the techniques used to compress the, 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 the debugging information. So this was the only way for you to see how it was encoding, because just a verbose mode. So the BTF section that's generated, it's that, that one, the, the, uh, .BTF. And uh, this is clang8 generating BTF. You see clang-target-bpf-g and test c, and then the uh, end result is a 64-bit uh, LSB, uh, little and uh, eBPF, not x86-64 anymore. And then there are three sections. Uh, the, the BTF X is not generated by PA hole. It's, that's where they are inserting a line number information. That's something that even could be done from the line number information from, um, from, from GCC, GCC, but it's better done by uh, Clang because it knows the offsets from, from where the lines, the, 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 the equivalent source code line are with the, the, the binary generator, the, the byte, BPF bytecode generator. So we have, uh, uh, I, uh, last month I wrote the uh, PA hole BTF loader, uh, so it reads the BTF stack, puts into the intermediate format, and then you can use it to freddy print the BTF uh, things. So if you do PA hole dash capital F BTF, you get the same thing. So, uh, uh, and they didn't do the, the uh, PA hole BTF loader because they, are, they were in a hurry. They, I mean, the, the thing is, the first loader for BTF was in the kernel. It was in the kernel. Uh, the the libbpf lib notices that there are some data structures 
that have in its name uh, underscore underscore BTF map and then the map name in a specific place and uh, it gets this thing from the ELF file and then it calls sysbpf on the FD of the BPF program and says associate this BTF information with that uh, BPF object that is already in the kernel that was already validated. This will trigger that this is the BPF map, uh, the, the, the macro in, uh, that does that. It just uh, gets that typed and then constructs the, the, the variables in a way that the loader will then uh, be able to associate. The kernel validates the BTF, validates the header, BTF magic, BTF version, flags, a lot of stuff. Uh, for instance, if you, some of the validations performed, if you look at grab BTF verify log in that specific file, that's the implementation for BTF in the kernel, you're going to see that it's validating lots of stuff. Um, several things that are related to how a data structure is uh, encoded. And this is an example of using the ftrace subcommand of perf to set up a function graph tracing only for the uh, functions in the kernel that, had, that has BTF in, in its name. And then you run pftrace that will use the BPF to to collect the things. And so, so you, you, you are using perf trace to trace perf trace and see it loading the BTF information. So I mean, you can combine that. That's something interesting with all those technologies. You can combine them together. Uh, you use perf to develop perf, use a, uh, you go on get, getting those things. So the first users for those technologies are people de developing the technologies. So you can see that, I mean, there are, this is just an excerpt. There, there are lots of other things that it does, but gives an example of what it is doing using perf to set up a trace to show BPF and the kernel. So BTF diff is just, it just uses PAHO dash capital F BTF file. It generates from, BT, from BT, BTF and from dwarf. And then there is that, that, that flat arrays because uh, as of now, the way that is being coded by, uh, by LLVM and the way that CTF was, was to further uh, pack the, the data structure. Any multidimensional array that you had in, in, a, in a struct would have the values of its uh, dimensions multiplied and then you have just one dimension, it was flattened. So you, when you get it from the wharf, you have to do this step and then combine it with. So it, it should produce the same results and it's being used for regression tests. So, Encoding multiple CUs, compile units, uh, if in the kernel, and in the kernel you have lots of objects, and for each of the objects, you have the definitions of all the data structures that it uses. So that, that's one of the reasons for, for the debugging for file to be so big. So what one guy at, at Facebook did uh, as part of the process of compressing all the data, inform uh, the, the data structure information for the Linux kernel in ju just one one place is to, you, you get all those things and put into just one BT, uh, BPF uh, payload. But you go on in such a way that uh, you go on rewriting the number of the types in the subsequent, in, in each thing to, to make them all unique. So, because in the first object, let's say, in the kernel, you have integer as type zero. Okay, integer, uh, the, the type, the basic type int, probably gonna be all the time one, let's say, zero to void. But some may have task struct, some may have uh, file operations, some may have some other, a mix, a difference. So uh, for each of them, they, they have the, the, those, those numbers. If you mix two together, then uh, you, you, you will, will mix the, uh, the, 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 the number one, from the first one with the number one or the second one that may not be the same thing. So th there is a step for to, to get all of those into one in a way that this is not uh, mixed up. And then that's the va vapor war part that uh, Stanislav was saying. Uh, they, the Facebook f is writing a, an algorithm that they describe it publicly but they haven't published it yet uh, that gets this big file now with all the types from all the compiled units of the kernel. And uh, it, they claim that uh, uh, they reduce by 97 times the size of the dwarf information that you have. So the idea is that the kernel will have uh, 
the kernel will have uh, all VM Linux will have these types, just like Solaris had in the past. So you, you, one of the things that may arise from this is that for lots of things, you will not need to have the kernel headers anymore. You can rebuild your data structures from this BTF information. Again, not just for debugging, for creating uh, BPF programs and, uh, and even for system tap, perhaps. So, and this is uh, more recent things that were being described in the, in the Linux Plumbers, Plumbers Conference in uh, Vancouver last November. So the idea here is that since you have in the kernel all the data you have in a compact form all the data for the kernel, so you know what task struct is. It's this data structure with those fields, with those types, and those types are like this and this and this. And your program that you compile it somewhere, with some machine, some machine of some architecture or whatever, it's a, a BPF bytecode. Together with it comes the definition of the types in the kernel that it uses. So when, when you are uh, loading this, this BPF object, it can check that the types that it uses are the same that are in the kernel that's being running at that time. If it's not, they can use some heuristics. They, they can use, oh, the, 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 the PID changed four bytes or, or changed it from this place to the other place because there was an optimization to get into different cache lines as is explained by uh, Ilka on the C2C example for Postgres. Then as part of the jitting, it can relocate the access and uh, make that thing that was for uh, older version, a different version of this, the, the same data structure to work with the new one. So that, that's because this is trying to, to reduce the need or to eliminate the need for you to have the tool chain uh, on the machine that you are going to run. So you build those object files and you ship th just those object files. Uh, when you are going to run it, you, you run it with something pre-compiled. So that bio, bio lat or all those things will come together with a .o that you're going to work a a anywhere. There are limitations for this. There are some changes that are not so simple. And then in those cases, we'll just bail out and say, oh, get a new version of, of this thing. Uh, but this is this is something which was recent. Uh, recent. I, I maintain the, the 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 tooling side of the uh, perf uh, subsystem. Sometimes I work in the kernel as well. And this is one one of those cases. Uh, the visibility of BPF programs. Uh, two new records were developed over the course of the last four or five months. Uh, lots of discussions uh, with Peter Zilstra that maintains the the kernel part. Alexei Sarovoitov, the guy who came up with the eBPF uh, concept idea, and several other engineers, both at Red Hat and uh, at uh, Facebook. So the, 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 this perf record case symbol is a new metadata record for, for perf, where any time some subsystem in the kernel uh, uh, puts in place new code, like for ftrace or for so any other, for K patch perhaps, or for any other thing, you get this registered in the, the stream, in the perf data file, or in the, or in the ring buffer, if you are consuming it uh, right away, like with perf top or perf tr uh, trace. And uh, so the, this, this solves, solves a, a problem that's not specific to BPF. Uh, BPF puts code there, so it, we're going to be using perf record case symbol. And then there is another one, which is perf record BPF event. Uh, let's see. Uh, a little bit about case symbol. So you have the normal header, then you have the uh, ADDR, where this thing is, and then the length of this uh, new um, code that was put in some place in the kernel at ADDR. And then you have the case sync type, if this is data, if this is something else, or if this, there are several ones. Some flags that today there are none, just for future um, and to use that whole. And then there is this case symbol name lane. And after that, as is usual with other perf record metadata events, you have 
information that's based on what you set up on the sample type. So you can have the TID, you can have a timestamp. Sometimes you don't want the, the CPU because you are tracing just that CPU. So to make the perforating buffer more compact or use less space per event, you use the, the, this thing. Uh, and then BPF event, which is the last one, which combining with the other will, will tell that the program was loaded and you have this uh, on ID, the program was loaded and you have this uh, tag, which is unique for, for the BPF program. So you have imperf record, let's say, using it as an example. You have a thread listening to this BPF event. It gets several, makes several calls to the kernel to get the FD associated with that program, then the BTF associated with that, uh, and, and gets the information. Gets the information, which, what, what's there? The types, the function prototypes, the original BPF bytecode, the JITED code, and source code line in sparing that was loaded when you inserted the, the, the program. This was, uh, what to do with that? This, that was a mishap. Annotation auditing and uh, Intel PT needs the JITED code to do uh, its motions. So that's it, that's the end. There is this information about the algorithm, the initial BTF doc patch that was sent to NetDev, and the patch that introduced BTF in LLVM. And, and it has a nice description of, of the motivation, why things were done in this way or that way, and so on and so forth. So that's what I had to say. And if you have any questions, I think that's the time. So there's like a four was as a debugging for format and millions kernels and uh, org and yeah. now BTF, which yeah. is uh, diff differs which differs from CTF. I see You're a right. design here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can you repeat that? Uh, the, I mean, the, the kernel has ORC, the, which is uh, unwinder. What is the debugging for? Exactly, debugging? exactly. I mean, the, the thing is, the kernel grew in complexity, so you need to tame this complexity. And uh, this complexity is, is, should be better tamed by the people who are putting the complexity there. So, uh, that because, if, like for F-Trace, F-Trace was something that nobody w would imagine when it was being done that it would be enabled in production for you to trace all the things in the kernel and etc. But then because the kernel developers knew that that was something that could be that that was really useful and they didn't want to say oh replace the kernel uh, with uh, the bug the bug one. So they worked over the years to to find the most uh, performant the most uh, uh, lightweight way to get that with security. So uh, I think that the, the kernel community working uh, with this in mind, with observability and making sure that the thing is safe, uh, it's, it's the perfect thing to, to happen. More questions? To what? You had a BTF trace event in a first thread? It's active. Oh, oh. There. So, ostensibly, a BTF program can run multiple times in parallel, yeah? Yeah, exactly. How does this trace event, do you have a field that differentiates? That's the tag. The, so, the tag's unique across the instances of an execution of a yeah. BTF program, not just yeah. BTF yeah. program? Yeah. They, 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 I mean, they, they, uh, they, it's. Uh, have you seen when we were uh, showing the, the, the BPF maps and uh, the, the, the number that was 549? That, that's not that was 549 maps. Is that, that because he was increasing it and not reusing the, the, the previous one, like a PID? Is there any uh, uh, universal to convert this format to a more widespread dwarf? Because we have a lot of field space tools that can deal with dwarf. Yeah, right, right. It's something new, and not to replicate all this work from this new format, it'd be easier probably to just convert them. Yeah, right, right. I mean, uh, the, the what? Oh, uh, he, he was asking if there was any, any tool to convert back to dwarf. 
from BTFS. Yeah. So uh, not that I know of, but uh, uh, PA Hall could be the, the two. It has a CTF encoder and a BTF encoder, but I never talked about doing a dwarf encoder. Well, we could do that if there is some interest. Right, right. The BARF is good for debugging. Right, right. After you do the application, it's really not that useful for debugging because you lose. The, the way that is in the justification for uh, the the introduction of BTF in uh, in this here, he said uh, it will not generate just B BPF. It will generate BPF and dwarf in tandem. So the tools, that, the old tools, will find a dwarf there and it will work. They just BTF. What's that? No, I don't care. Not really. I didn't took the time to to see that to to check that. I I, I know I know in, in 2015 in 15 I think in Santa Clara uh, they they were starting to see this need and then they were talking with Dave, which is the upstream for BPF, and he said, oh, talk to Arnaldo because he he has this tool that does the conversion, etc. So that they got that thing and uh, and they look at the definition for CTF there, and came up with BTF. There is a lot of discussion on the NetDev mailing list and on the, and Young Hong Song, that's a guy at uh, Facebook, it's really approachable. I, I, I will ask this, I got, I got curious now, I'm gonna ask him. If I get some answer, I'll pass it back to him. Any other question? So we can go to the party. <laughs> Thank you.